Hello everyone, Neuralar here, and I'm here today for two reasons. One is to show you my 1000 amp hour battery bank that I paid $40 for. And if you like batteries or making your own solar setup, I think you'll find that pretty interesting. And two is to show you how I'm going to go about verifying the condition of and reconditioning my battery bank. Because, like many of the things around here, I didn't buy it new. When possible and when practicable, I like to take things that are uh, used up or discarded for some reason and make them into something useful again. That's why I have this car in my garage, for example. This one was in very poor condition and I repaired it. It's now a pretty nice vehicle. I drive that one around. My lawnmower over here, I made a video on fixing that. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I figured it out. There's also a vice grip holding things together and other issues. The handle broke off, I had to weld that back on. Various other things. Uh, my air compressor over here I repaired. I have another vehicle sitting outside. Uh, it's a 22-year-old vehicle that I use as my winter car. Unless you live in the Rust Belt here in the uh, upper Midwest, you probably don't understand. If you do, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I've made a lot of videos on fixing inverters. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about a battery bank that I picked up that was discarded, that I bought for scrap value, and that I'm going to use for my uh, emergency backup setup. But before I show you that, I'm going to give you a little bit of a history on the batteries that I've been through over the last few years that I've used for various purposes. This is the type of battery that most people are familiar with. This is a standard automotive battery, Group 78, typical in GM vehicles. This one happens to be, uh, I think, nine years old, which is why it was removed from service, but it still works, so I kept it, and I use it every once in a while for various things. This will run inverters, but it won't run them for very long, and the battery itself also won't last very long. Not recommended, but that's what most people have. The first true deep cycle batteries that I've used for playing around with inverters and such, I actually acquired it while I was still in college. Uh, they're very old batteries that someone else had discarded, so I grabbed those, and I used them for quite a few years. They were very high quality batteries, however they were very old, nearing their end of life, so I used them as core charges to get other batteries. Therefore, I'm not magic. I can't, tell, I can't show you those batteries, but you can go back and view my some of my old videos where they showed up, like in the UPS to inverter modification uh, conversion video that I did. But I used those as core charges to get other batteries. The next set of deep cycle batteries that I grabbed were these Autocraft ones. And these are actually pretty nice batteries. They are lead calcium design. Uh, I picked these up at um, Advanced Auto Parts. Uh, it's their particular brand. I think they're made by Johnson Controls. But these are pretty nice batteries. They are small, they're Group 24, and they're standard consumer grade batteries. They work for that application. I use them in series for a 24 volt battery bank. And you can see these in use in my uh, UPS, APC Smart UPS 1500 video series. The next ones that I got are these three down here. These are a very low end battery. It's an Exide Nautilus Deep Cycle. 27 MDC. Uh, I'm not going to say that they're bad batteries. They're lead antimony. They're more true deep cycle than any of the others that I've shown so far. But uh, they are fairly low quality. Now, I've noticed that they tend to leak around these uh, heat sealed areas here that should be sealed. They're not very well sealed. Uh, but overall, they're pretty decent batteries. These are group 27, uh, 105 amp hours each, I believe they're rated for. But these I was planning on using for the uh, power backup and other inverter applications. And I just recently came across another opportunity to get more batteries. And I'll show you those here next. So my initial plan was to use those five batteries that I've just shown you and putting all five of those together to make my backup battery system. And that would give me a little under 500 amp hours. However, they're not the highest quality batteries, so they wouldn't last very long. In my case, that doesn't matter a whole lot. I'm not making a solar setup or something of that nature, so I only need them to last a few cycles. It's more of a hobby than a real purpose, to tell you the truth. But uh, I do want a good battery bank, and recently I came across a good opportunity to have one. Now, none of the batteries that I just showed you would be good for a solar-type application, where these batteries are cycled almost every day. They are consumer-grade batteries, and there's nothing wrong with that. After all, I bought five of them. 
but they have their place and they have their limitations. As long as you don't expect a whole lot out of them, in terms of cycle life or lifetime, they work just fine. And they were okay for my application, but when I had the opportunity to get a much better quality battery bank, I jumped on it. Now the place where I work builds industrial equipment, and I noticed on a loading dock where they have scrap batteries, a set of what I perceive to be very nice batteries. So I asked the maintenance office, can I have them? Can I buy them? And they let me buy them for scrap value. So that's what I'm going to show you here. And these would be appropriate batteries for a solar setup. I'm going to set the camera right here. And you can see in the background over there, my 12 volt generator that I made. It neatly stores beneath my workbench, right next to my rolling workbench, underneath my workbench. Uh, anyway, but uh, so this battery bank that I'm going to show you, I purchased for a total of $40. Now, what did $40 buy me? Well, these are the batteries. This is a approximately 100 amp hour battery. Uh, I'll tell you more about it later. However, it weighs about 72 pounds. So this is pretty good exercise moving these around. Now, I didn't just get one battery for my money. No, I got Another one. And 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 yet, one more. I got a total of eight batteries. So, for my $40 investment, I got eight high quality deep cycle batteries. And I'll tell you more details on these, but first of all, the story behind them. How did I end up with these? Well, it turns out that, uh, like I said, this company makes industrial equipment, and these batteries were used in a series battery bank, so all of these were connected up in series to power this particular piece of equipment for backup power. And one of these went bad. This particular equipment was stored for about four years, uh, either because the customer didn't take delivery or because it wasn't sold. And uh, when they fired this up to ship it out, they found that one of the batteries was bad. So what they did, instead of replacing the one battery and sending the customer a battery bank that may or may not be 100%, uh, they decided to just replace every battery. Now, what does a company do with a battery bank that might still be good but might not be? Well, you sure don't sell it to a customer, so they scrapped it and uh, I ended up with it. So one of these I knew would probably be bad and the rest I knew would probably be good. Uh, but before I get into that, let me describe a little bit about what these batteries really are. This is the brand of the batteries. It's a PowerSafe SBS100F and you can see the date on them, August 2009. So that makes them about four years old now that I got them. What they've been doing for the previous four years of their life, I don't really know if they've been maintained or not, which kind of scared me a little bit. But uh, these batteries are somewhat special. I mentioned that the other deep cycle batteries that I have, some of them are lead calcium, some of them are lead antimony. Now, to know what to do with a battery bank like this, how to inspect it, how to maintain it, how to recondition it, etc., you really need to know what you're buying. And this particular bank here is a pure lead technology. Now, they went away from pure lead for a lot of good reasons. One of them being recycled lead is never pure. And instead of repurifying the lead, which is expensive, consumer grade stuff just takes the dirty lead, casts them, and calls it good. Um, that's not what they did with these. This is virgin lead or fully reprocessed lead. So these are pure lead technology. And there's other reasons that they add these other additives to batteries. These happen to be a specialized AGM type battery, absorbent glass mat. Uh, so they're technically dry cells in that respect. They have a vent up here with a flame arrestor in it um, so that they can vent, but they're highly recombinant, uh, non-spillable batteries, and they can use pure lead technology. That gets you a higher capacity in a smaller size. It also gives you very low uh, resistance, internal resistance. These are very, very nice batteries. And one additional thing that Pure Lead gives you is that these actually have a 
two year shelf life, meaning you can charge them up and leave them sit on a shelf at 70 degrees Fahrenheit for two years. No charging or anything and they'll still be good. And that's pretty remarkable. Most batteries are about six months. If you leave them for a full year, you might as well throw them away. But not these. Also, these are designed for a 15 year life. And uh, 15 years is very, very old for a battery that's meant to be used as a deep cycle battery. Usually they only make it three or so. Uh, these are, like I mentioned, extremely high quality batteries. I didn't really know what I got until I got them home and researched them. So I dumped these 600 pounds of batteries in the trunk of my car, hauled them home, got some good exercise lugging them around. They're now in my garage, and uh, I'm going to open up some data sheets and uh, kind of show you what these batteries are a little bit and why I think they're so special. Take a look at the cycle life performance. On the left, you have the number of cycles that these batteries can endure. The top line here is 15,000 cycles. This bottom one down here is 1,000 cycles. Now, a deep cycle battery that lasts for 1,000 cycles is a pretty darn good battery. And that's just the bottom tick on this graph. And here you have percent depth of discharge. The general rule of thumb is that you don't want to discharge a battery past 50% because its cycle life decreases drastically after that. You can see in this one that you get about 1,500 cycles if you discharge them to 50% depth of discharge. And if you discharge them to 100%, you're only going to get maybe a hundred cycles or something, not very much. So you don't want to discharge them all the way, just like any other battery. So 50% gives you 1,500 cycles. 